Anybody know what that word means? <laughs> Just going to have to be frank. Uh, good morning. Half of the, what's up with you guys? Yesterday I said the same thing, nobody replied. I said good morning. And, you guys not excited as much as we are? Uh, but really, um, as my mom always says, it's another chance to improve ourselves. <laughs> and it is, it is. But as with every conference, as with anything that happens, uh, the people that show up make it a success. So thank you for bearing with us yesterday. Thank you for the reception. Thank you for being with us again this morning. I mean, it's a Saturday. We had to compete. Uh, so, so thank you. And thank you to the Youth, youth Center for Youth and Literature uh, for all the efforts once more. It goes without saying. I mean, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. And I think... Um, it pays to be grateful. It pays for, for gratitude. Um, so I'm going to try to get you guys to reflect. My, my mom always says, wear shoes that have laces. Um, and, don't, and tie them loosely. So that when the laces come off, you have a reason to kneel and a moment to think. A moment to say a prayer, if some of you believe in that. A moment um, for gratitude. I need that. I need that every now and then. I need that because uh, I don't know how, as they say, a story has a middle, a beginning, and an end. Um, most people are privileged enough to know stability, to have grown in one place, and other people don't. Uh, so, I'm going to ask you guys for the next few seconds to just have a moment for yourself. Ignore everybody's here. I mean, don't ignore me. <laughs> but I don't worry. Just, just a few seconds. Um, doesn't take much. Speaking of which, uh, everybody's got a smartphone, right? You got a smartphone? Cool. Does your phone have an alarm? Nice. Can you take it out? Just real quick, and go to the alarm section. <clears throat> <I'm>, <laughs> I don't have a phone on me. <laughs> this is nice. Uh, yes, just have a look. What time was your alarm set this morning? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> when we used to complain about waking up and going to school, um, mom would take, uh, would, would, would just, she wasn't frustrated, she, she would just laugh about it in the morning. She says, you guys are so lucky you live in one of the most, one of the few countries that people's only morning disturbance is the alarm clock. And people still press news, you know? Um, but then again, she went on to emphasize, do not gamble with your time. And every time I think about that, I, I just, I, I just, you know, I, I, I pause because how can someone who is formerly an educated know so much? Uh, how, how imagination drove us to be here. Um, I, I stand before you no different from anybody else, but it's, it's, it's the reflectiveness of the choices you choose to make. And the emphasis is very simple. Do not gamble with your time. You have something to say, say it. You have a story to tell, tell it. And gratitude, that's, that's all it takes. Um, that's, that's my emphasis this morning. That's, that's my emphasis every day, really. When my sister gave birth, uh, the baby was three months premature. Of course, we were nervous. I was like, why would, you guys, why would you guys be nervous? I, I was at the hospital laughing at how tiny her foot was and how cute the babies were. And I looked in the mirror and went, what, what, what's wrong with me? And I, I grew, of course, but she was three months premature and the excitement that happened for me was that she, was, she must have been that excited to really uh, <laughs> want to come and meet us. Uh, and, and it goes to show uh, the, the differences in perspective. Of course, that's what happened to me. Um, 
and that happened because I got the, the privilege to, to stand on stages and share stories, um, most of which are my own reflections, and very grateful to be, to be sharing with you guys this morning these deeds. So, um, I was timing the few seconds that we were going to have the reflection, but I kept talking. <laughs> that was a contradiction, wasn't it? So, 20 more seconds. I've got, I've got, I've got time on my hands. <laughs> Speaking of not gambling. But seriously, just feel your toes. I'm sure you guys got some. sense. There's so much out there that tells us to, to, to analyze and to put logic into display. Um, and everybody wants to get us to think. But, but not many people are spending enough time to make us feel. I'm still talking... So what slam poetry did for me, pretty much gave me a purpose. And as with the same, with everything that we come across, uh, you find it gives you a reason to get up in the morning. Now, do you want to know what time I wake up in the morning? Uh, I, <laughs> I seriously just, just up at it um, because I've, I've got this, I mean, yesterday and today, it was like, whoa, I get to share some poems. Awesome, and meet some people. Uh, so today, the only favor I'm going to ask from you is very simple. I want, you, I want you to be of service today. That's it. Well, and tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after that, and so on and so forth. And the only, the only service that I want you to be of, not me, the only service that I would like you to be of today is simply to deliver a smile through the whole day. That's the only service I'm asking of you. I don't want a round of applause when I finish speaking, although that would be nice. <laughs> you gotta feed this ego. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. All right, so let's get into some poems. As I stated yesterday, uh, most of my poems don't have a title, mainly because when I start writing a poem, I don't think it finishes. And w with your writing, I'm sure it's the same. When you start writing, not a poem, but anything in general, the only time you stop is when you put a full stop. But if you put a comma, you continue. And that's, that's, that's the analogy that I take on. Um, when I gave myself the permission to write, um, and I'm asking you to give yourself the permission to write, and instead of using a full stop, use a comma. And just continue on. Dear child, there will be times when you don't understand what is going on. But do not be timid. Rise and shine. The sun circled the globe in anticipation of lightening your path. Put your best foot forward. Slowly with the rhythm, hum with the birds. When dogs bark, it's their way of greetings. How else would you say good morning? Hold your place still. Do not be timid. So long as they're oblivious of how long it took to practice, you also prayed, please. Thank you. Amen. And of the people who don't know how much you've spent to get here, don't ask for approval. Don't ask for permission to do the right thing. To be courageously kind. Because that's what it takes. It takes courage to be kind. So how brave are you? To be silent when everybody is speaking. To be gracious when everything is chaotic. To be patient when all the noise inside you 
disturbs you. Dear child, the world is unknown. But as you progress, every single day is different to the one prior. So don't hold on to the past. And don't try and step too quickly into the future. Be present. Now. It takes stepping stones to find out who you are. Progress is a personal effort. Dear child, don't expect a harvest where you haven't sown any seeds. And people are the most important investment. They are the best assets. We are not to compete with them. But the journey that we have embarked upon is the one where we can either dismiss them or we can go together. We don't know how it all started, but we are quite sure how it will end. But instead of being too stressful about the endings, why don't we make now the happiest? It's up to us to make it all make sense. Dear child, the world doesn't know you, and that's fine. It will question you, it will threaten you, it will deny you. As a matter of fact, the door will be shut in your face. When you try to enter places where you don't belong, when you get told you're not good enough, when you are refused your dreams, when you don't have enough credit, as if dreams need validations, if not from the person it means much to. Dear child, life is a gift. Do not be too caught up with the myth of ownership. And if you need any reason to keep going on, remember, you have kisses and hugs to give. So me, me and uh, grow, growing up in Sudan, of course, uh, growing up in Khartoum, we used to fill, fill up uh, dirty socks, socks which we could wear from both ends and, and, and kick that around as part of uh, a soccer ball. And uh, all of our friends, we used, to, we used to talk about our dads, and I used to make up great stories about my dad. I painted. He, he was like a superman, had great hair, used head and shoulders. <laughs> it was an image of a man that I didn't know much about. But I think his sacrifices are eminent, evident. My father was not the most educated man, but every choice he made kept my family alive. So to me, he was wise. Despite not having academic credentials, he knew the basis, the basics of life. That is, an honest man really has nothing to fear. As I stand before you, a product of a single parent, my mother was not the most educated woman, but she knew the essence, the secret ingredients that she never read from but yet she passed on to my siblings. How the kitchen would smell so good when we had nothing to cook. Well, the trick was, you had to have a household full of kids. And then telling them to wait on each other. Waiting on some things constantly waiting. When waiting was never enough, you had to find ways to wait. One of our friends used to be so poor, 
He said that when it was really cold, they would light a candle. And when it got really, really cold, they would gather around it. And when it got very cold, they would light an extra one. That's how it feels nowadays, to be in the midst amongst people that I don't know. Because family is not a threat that is made somewhere else. It constitutes here. As a traveling poet, I've learned to trade handshakes for kisses and hugs. And you would be amazed how defensive people get, but also how quickly a smile unshackles their guards. In my short time while traveling, I've learned to conceal all my sorrows because it isn't just about me anymore. People are at their best when I smile, mainly because it gets them to do the same. I feel obliged to never let a day go by without causing others to smile at their own will. To break the barriers we've imposed upon ourselves, I refuse to shake hands, mainly because it causes distance I would rather embrace. As uncomfortable as it may sound, some people want to break away while others realize it's okay. The one essential quality of human connection is touch. Then why do we avoid each other so much? To break the barriers we've imposed upon ourselves, just need to get comfortable with each other. I'm convinced because I heard the wind made a bed and said to the sun, you see the man down the street, I bet I can make him take off his coat faster than you can. So the sun hid behind the clouds and the wind blew. The harder it blew, the more the man gripped on his coat. When the wind gave up, the sun came out from behind the clouds and smiled, and the man took off his coat. Force always loses. The alternative has been at our disposal. We just need to be gentle with one another. And so I've traded handshakes because they're too rough. I'd rather kisses and hugs. There's plenty to go around. There's enough. Dear child, do not be fooled. Insecurities are part of life. Our imperfections are what makes us perfect. I was once frightened, so I ran, but it kept keeping up with me until I realized the street lights reflected my shadow, and I saw that I was actually chasing it. Breathlessly, I stopped, and it stopped, so that was it. And just the same, my thoughts used to traumatize me. My biggest influence was myself telling me that I would amount to nothing. It took so long to come to terms with certain things. My biggest influence was myself telling me that I would amount to nothing. But as of lately, I've learned to reveal all my insecurities to my pages. And the pen allows me the flexibility to do that. Standing in front of people, just wondering, what could I possibly tell them? But I've realized I don't have to pretend. Dear child, do not be afraid to reveal your insecurities to your pen. Sweet. Wow. Cool. Just I'm going to close out with this one last story. I'm, uh, I promise, I promise, I promise a lot of my friends that uh, I'll be performing it because when I decided, they, they, they said, how did you know I was thinking that? I said, hey, look, there's no copyrights. It's just poetry. <laughs> when we used to go to schools, um, of course, back in Sudan, we couldn't afford them. They were built out of, uh, you know, trees and pretty much like camping. So whenever it rained, we knew there was no school, so we wouldn't go. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we couldn't afford, we couldn't afford papers, uh, pens, etc. None of that. So that, it was easy. We just went to school because we knew there was lunch. Um, the school provided it. So that, that was a bonus. Um, but along the way, of course, I had to, we had to start finding things uh, to make us genuinely interested. And then coming here to Australia and then going to school for the first time and then um, making a sandwich, I thought it was chocolate, and then took a bite of it, and then it was Vegemite. <laughs> Thinking, I didn't know how to read, I thought everything was chocolate, but that was that. <laughs> of course. 
All I ever wanted was to go to school, to wear uniforms and run around with a backpack on my back and have books and pencils and marvel at the magic of rubber. How it erases what I wrote wrong and fixes parts of the extra lines I drew. Pencils were expensive. In half, we would snap them to share it with those who could not afford it. And mind you, half of a pencil lasted a long time. Sharpening one was an honor because it meant you wrote and we couldn't but wanted to. Above all, I lastly longed for one thing, to read and reap from the magic of reading, which was bestowed upon those who afforded school fees, and most of the time, my mother couldn't. Instead, I watched the kids who ran around with backpacks on their backs and had books and pencils and marvel at the magic of rubber. Luckily for me, I learned the magic of reading from the rap songs I heard, lip-syncing rap lyrics before I knew what they meant. I was running around my mama's house talking about I was going to clean my room, but then I got ha. <laughs> if only she knew what I was talking about. See, hip hop changed my mindset. It altered my life. Because now I can hold a pen and a pencil to pin a story. That's all I've ever wanted. And now that I've got it, I'm trying to make the most of it. As someone who, someone, as someone who once suffered from illiteracy, I now advocate that literacy should be considered every child's nightmare because every child should have a dream to at least learn to read and write. That's all I've ever wanted. And now that I've got it, I hope you make the most of it. Thank you very much.